Hey guys, so with the Sephora spring sale right around the corner, I wanted to film a video decluttering my Sephora loves list. I did a video like this around this time last year before last year's sale, and you guys seem to really enjoy it. So I wanted to do it again because this is one of my favorite exercises to do in preparation for a sale. And you guys know I'm really not a big fan of the Sephora sale. I really don't think the savings are that great. But with that being said, I think I usually end up buying a couple things anyway because a 10% off discount is at least something and I have a few things on my wish list that I've been like really wanting to get my hands on for a while. And I've shared before, I like to use my loves list as a tool to help me shop more mindfully. So my rule of thumb is if there's a sale going on, I only allow myself to buy things that were previously on my wish list to begin with. So that way I know it's something that I actually want and I'm not just buying it because it's on sale. But I think it's been actually a year since I've gone through and weeded out my Sephora loves list, gotten rid of anything that I know I'm not gonna buy or that I just don't think would make a very worthwhile addition to my collection. So that is what we are going to do today. I'm gonna share my screen with you and this will kind of also double as a wish list type video. And I also like doing these videos because I get some really helpful feedback from you guys in the comments. So if any of the products that I'm considering buying, if you've tried them yourself, I would love to hear your thoughts on them down below. Do you think I would enjoy it? Do you think I would hate it? I welcome any and all feedback in this video. So I am really excited to get into it. Let's go ahead and take a look at my Sephora loves list. Okay, so here is my loves list. I have it sorted by recently added. So these are some things I recently added on. I'm gonna give you a quick run through and then we will start at the bottom because those are the things I added the longest ago. So those are probably some things I can take off. The list is quite long. I'm gonna to try to cut this down as much as possible. Starting here at the bottom, we have a fragrance from The Seven Virtues. I love The Seven Virtues. This is the Vanilla Wood scent. I've had a sample of this in the past, love it. This is one of the best vanilla fragrances I've ever smelled. I am still so sad to say that I cannot wear perfumes anymore. They, um, well, I can't wear them on my skin because they give me a rash, but I also can't wear them on my clothing anymore because they make me cough. I did talk to my doctor about it and she said actually a lot of the time it's not the fragrance itself that you're allergic to but the base ingredients that they use and I think that's probably true for me because I'm still able to use skincare with fragrance in it. Right now I have on a very heavily fragranced hairspray. No issue whatsoever. So it must be one of the base ingredients that a lot of these brands use in their fragrances. I would like to find out what that might be. I don't know if this is the full ingredient list here or what, but anyway, I'm still holding on to some of my favorite fragrances because I'm really hoping that one day maybe my allergy will go away. I don't know. Maybe that's wishful thinking. But in the meantime, I am not buying any fragrances. I'm kind of on a fragrance no buy, if you will. So I am going to go ahead and take this off my loves list. Um, maybe one day I will be able to get it, but I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. I still have this Fenty Beauty fly liner on here. This was, I think I actually rewatched last year's Decluttering My Sephora Loves List video. And this was one of the products that was on there. It's still here. I still haven't bought it. But this is something that a lot of people have highly recommended. I usually don't buy high-end eyeliners, but um, Kelly Gooch highly recommends this one. A lot of you guys have told me that you love this one as well. Specifically, the shade In Big Truffle, which is a chocolate brown. I This is still on my wish list. I have no intention of taking it off my wish list, but right now I do not need a brown liquid liner. I'm still using the Annabelle one that I have. So I won't be buying this eyeliner this sale, but I'm gonna leave it on my loves list because one day I, I think this will be the next brown liner that I buy. Also, if anyone has any suggestions for a good brown pencil liner, I could use a recommendation there because I actually am completely out of brown pencil liner and I kind of miss having one in my collection. So let me know, maybe there's one I could pick up in the sale. And I'm looking for like a true brown, not like a super dark brown that almost looks black. I want like a true chocolate brown uh, liner. So let me know if you have any recommendations. This is something I actually bought in last year's sale, the Fenty Sunstalker bronzer in the shade In The Sun. I love this bronzer. This is one of my favorite purchases of last year. 
So um, obviously I can take this off of my loves list now because I've already bought it, but I was very happy with that purchase. I also still have these Urban Decay Moon Dust eyeshadows. I have, I think, two of their most iconic shades on my loves list, Space Cowboy and Lithium. Those are the two that I am most interested in. I still would like to get these. I probably wouldn't buy it in the Sephora sale because I know Urban Decay does like 50% off sales every now and then, so I would like to wait until I could get probably a better than 10% off discount on this, but it is still on my wish list for sure. This is something I wanted so badly last year, and, and I was almost convinced that I was going to buy it. The Rare Beauty Positive Light Silky Touch Highlighter. I have the shade Mesmerize on my loves list. It's funny, I feel like I don't hear anyone talking about this highlighter anymore. I know it was super hyped up last year when it came out, but I personally have just not been that excited about highlighter lately. I still wear it most days, but I don't really, I don't really have the urge to buy any new ones. So yeah, I think if I were to get one of these, I think Mesmerize or maybe Enlighten I would get. I did swatch this at Sephora recently and it did feel really nice. I will say that. Like it had a very like silky texture, so I see where it gets the name, but um, I don't know. If you have this, do you still feel like it's worth all the hype that it got? Or I don't know. I think I'm going to take this off my loves list because I don't really, I'm just not in the mood to buy highlighters right now. I feel like I have plenty. I, I like a lot of the highlighters that I have and I'm not really in the market for any new ones. So I'm kind of surprised to take, to take that one off, but the Ordinary Multi-Peptide Lash and Brow Serum, I, oh, they, it looks like they raised the price by like 40 cents, I think, since the last time. I am on my second tube of this. I love this lash serum. I use it in both my lashes and my brows, and it really does work. It's a peptide-based lash serum, and I really do feel like my lashes have gotten longer, thicker. I almost feel like my lashes even have, are, look a little bit darker. Um, my lashes are naturally like pretty light, but I feel like they're a little bit darker than they used to be since I've been consistently using this. Love this product. I will definitely repurchase it. I'm not in need of a new one right now, but I'm going to keep this on my loves list in case like the next time I'm shopping, if I'm almost out, I will definitely pick up another one of these. The Pharmacy Mini 10% Niacinamide Night Mask. I have the mini version of this on here because I haven't tried it before. And so I think if I were to get this, I would want to get the mini size. I have heard really good things about this from, I think Kelly Gooch really likes it. That's who initially influenced me to put this on my wish list. I still would like to try this. I, the, the annoying thing is I feel like I'm never running out of moisturizer. Like I always have moisturizers on backup that I've gotten in PR that I still need to use. So I don't know, but I don't know. I really want to try this too. So I'm going to keep it on my loves list for sure. Cause I'm definitely still interested. Um, and I like that it comes in a mini size, but I probably, I don't know, I probably won't buy it this time around, but then again, I don't know if there will ever be a good time for me to buy it, so maybe I should just go ahead and buy it now. But anyway, that's going to stay on here. Oh, I still really want to try the Fenty Gloss Balm, Gloss Balm, not Balm, but I, like, like I just said, I'm on a perfume no-buy, and unfortunately, I'm also on a lip product no-buy. I'm not allowing myself to buy any new lip products. I'm thinking about making an exception for this one. The reason for this is because I know I've said this like a million times, so you're probably getting tired of hearing me talk about this, but a lot of lip products have started irritating my throat. I don't know if it's an allergy or if it's just, I, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I don't even want to talk about it because it's just so frustrating, but I really want to try this though. I really do want to try this lip gloss more than any other lip product. I mean, I know it's been out for years. It's not a new product at all, but I feel like of all the lip glosses out there, this is one of the most popular ones, and I would love to be able to try it just to see what all the hype is about. But I also know that I should probably not buy any new glosses right now. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna at least leave this on my loves list. I'm probably gonna remove all the other lip products on here, but I'm gonna leave this on here. I don't, time will tell if I buy it. Um, yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> okay, then we have some duos here from Patrick Ta. I still have yet to try Patrick Ta. I am 
still really interested in trying Patrick Ta. But we have their blush duo in She's So LA. I did see that they came out with some new shades of these blush duos that look like they would suit me a little bit better. I've always been drawn to the She's So LA shade, but I just think it looks too dark. Like, I think this looks too dark for me. So I'm going to remove this shade from my loves list, but one of the new shades, this this is called Not Too Much, which sounds perfect for me because I, I, I'm always saying I want a blush that's not too much. And so this is described as a soft, rosy taupe. It looks like kind of a lighter version of She's So LA, not quite as bronzy, but kind of like a bronzy rose. This looks so beautiful. So if I were to purchase any shade, it would be this one. Unfortunately, this one is out of stock, so probably won't be able to get it this sale unless it comes back. But yeah, all of the other shades of this, I think, are just a little bit too dark for my skin tone. So um, She's the Moment. This is another new one. This looks really pretty, too. Maybe a little bit too bright. And I'm not getting any more soft blue-pink blushes. No more blue-based pink for me. <laughs> I'm done. Um, I'm honestly sick and tired of all the pink blush. Like, I know... I know it's trendy, I know people love their pink blush, but like, it's gotten to be a little ridiculous. Not too much, as you can see, I did add this to my loves list, but I am going to remove She's So LA. I can, I can finally move on from that one that's been on my wish list for so long, but I think it's time. Then, this is one of their contour and bronzer duos. The shades, uh, this is the shade She's Statuesque, which looks perfect for me. I love how light this looks. I love that the cream... Here, let, let's get a closer look at this real quick. Yeah, the cream looks like more of a contour shade, and then the powder looks like a nice kind of rosy, warm bronzer. This looks like my perfect everyday bronzer duo. Yeah, I am very tempted by this. This is definitely staying on my loves list. Then we have some lipsticks. I really am not feeling tempted to buy any bullet lipsticks. I'm just not a big bullet lipstick person anymore. I will still wear them. I mean, I'm literally wearing one right now. I feel like I wear them more often than I think I do. But at the same time, I have plenty. And over the last year, I'm really just not into very bold lip colors. If I'm going to wear a bright color, it's probably going to be something more sheer, like a tinted lip balm or something. So I can definitely remove both of these Patrick Ta matte suede lipsticks. Also, the fact that I'm not buying any new lip products definitely makes it easier to just go ahead and kick these off the list. <laughs> Goodbye. Then we have the Charlotte Tilbury Mini Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. I do still want this. I feel like everyone who uses this setting spray, it's like one of their holy grails. Has anyone tried this and not liked it? <laughs> um, I would be curious, but... I definitely would get the mini, a hydrating alcohol and oil-free spray that weightlessly sets makeup for up to 16 hours without melting, fading, or settling into fine lines. I'm curious about that because I've always thought that for a setting spray to really increase the wear time of your makeup, it has to have alcohol in it to like dry down your face. But I would be curious to see if this one actually lives up to those claims. So this one, this one is staying on the list for sure. The Rare Beauty, I had a few shades, I think, of the Rare Beauty liquid blush on my loves list, but I have since purchased the mini shade of Hope. I love it. I'm really enjoying it, but now that I have one shade, I don't really feel the need to get any more shades. So, especially not in a full size, because it is very pigmented. Like everyone says, it's a very concentrated pigment. So you need just the tiniest bit, and so I think I really have no desire to get a full size because I just don't think I would ever be able to use it up. Also, now that I know the formula, I think Believe, this shade here, would be too deep for me. So we are removing that from my loves list. Glossier is a brand that I have yet to try. I can't believe I'm saying that. I feel like I'm like the last person on earth to try or to not have tried Glossier. But here we are. I actually, let's see. I still, I still would love to try the cloud paint. I, I feel like even years later, a lot of people still love this formula, even though it's been out for forever. I, yeah, I think, let's see, the shade Puff. I don't know that I would want to get the shade Puff, though. This was the shade I had chosen, but I might actually, I think I've really started to hone in on 
my like what I like as far as uh, warm versus cool tones and most of the time I prefer a warm toned blush. So I think I would probably either go for Dusk, ooh yeah, brownish nude, count me in, or Beam, which is a soft peach. Peach is my favorite type of blush shade. That being said, I have a lot of peachy blushes already, so I'm going to actually add Dusk to my loves list, but I'm going to take Puff off because I think this is maybe a bit, a bit too cool toned for me. So goodbye. Moving right along, we have another shade of the Rare Beauty Highlighter. Like I said, I think I'm ready to take this off my loves list, just not really in the market for any highlighters right now. Couple shades here of the Lawless Forget the Filler. I now actually own two shades of this. I already have the shade Cherry Vanilla. It's a sheer cherry red. I love it. I This is one of my favorite gloss formulas of all time. I think it is so unique. It's definitely thick, so if you don't like a thick gloss, be warned. But this is one of the best glosses for actually making your lips look plumper. Like it really does fill in the lines of your lips and makes them look bigger. So I, like I said, I already have cherry vanilla, so I don't need that. And I also had the shade Velvet on here, which looks like they call it a rosy mauve with plummy undertones. I actually don't think this is my kind of color anymore. Um, I used to like mauve more, but now I just feel like these kinds of mauve shades are a little bit too purpley on my skin tone. They kind of wash me out. So that um, I can remove. And now that I have two shades of this, I have, um, like I said, Cherry Vanilla and Juicy Watermelon, both of which they've sent me in PR. I would definitely be willing to try another shade. The Super Sheer Baby Pink looks really pretty. I love a milky pink. Those are my favorites. Um, yeah, this is the shade. Wait, where is Juicy Watermelon? Yeah, this is the other shade I have, very bright pink. I wouldn't mind getting, like, maybe... Ooh, Glazed also looks lovely. Glazed, rosy outlook. I like that they have some minis of these. They also now make a jumbo size. I think they only make maybe two shades of the jumbo size, cherry vanilla and rosy outlook. I don't need any jumbo size anything because it takes me long enough to use up anything, <laughs> but... <sighs> okay. I'm going to I'm going to actually put glazed on my loves list because that looks so pretty. Um for just like a milky sheer gloss. Rosy outlook. This also looks Okay, I'm going to add rosy outlook too. Actually, you know what? No. I'm going to add the mini version of rosy outlook because I feel like that's I, I don't need a, a, even a full size. But I am going to take the shade Velvet off my loves list because I just don't think that's my kind of shade. The LYS Triple Fix Brightening Concealer. I feel like the hype has definitely died down. I think this has been out for a couple years now. And I feel like I don't really hear anyone talking about this concealer anymore. Does anyone, is this anyone's like holy grail concealer still? I, I'm definitely still open to trying it. I think, yeah, I would get the shade LN3. I love their Triple Fix foundation. It's one of my favorite light coverage, glowy foundations. This is it's a full coverage concealer. I do prefer things that are full coverage, or at least that claim to be full coverage, because I got some dark circles that I like to cover, but mm, I'm not in a hurry to get this, really. I mean, there's another concealer, which you'll see, or you might have already seen it at the top of my list that I am dead set on buying. Like this, I think that one will be my next concealer purchase. So this one I'm not in a hurry to get, but I'll go ahead and leave it on the list for now. I really would like to try this Fenty Ease Drop Blurring Skin Tint. I have not, I, I've only ever tried the Fenty Bronzer. I think that's the only Fenty product that I've tried so far, believe it or not. Definitely one of the top brands on my list that I want to try more from because I love their bronzer so much. I feel like they must make other amazing products too. And this they describe as a lightweight, buildable, light to medium coverage foundation that leaves the skin looking blurred and smoothed. I like the idea of a blurring skin tint. I do feel like most skin tints, for whatever reason, are very dewy and glowy, and I like that, but I don't always want that. Even when I want light coverage, I might want it to be a little bit more on the matte side. So this is very high up on my wish list, I would say. Like this, don't be surprised if I buy this this upcoming sale because I would really like to try this. 
Um, which shade would I get? I think probably... Probably the shade 2, light with neutral undertones. That's typically the shade description that I go for. I'll, I'll make sure to check the foundation website to see what my what they say my match would be, but I'm guessing it would probably be the shade 2. This is definitely staying on my list. Another shade of the Rare Beauty highlighter. This one I am going to remove. Okay, I see some more lip products here. I'm going to go ahead and just remove all of these because I'm really trying not to buy any new lip products. The Fenty Hydrating Lip Stain. I have very much been in a lip stain phase recently. Um, like, they're one of my favorite types of lip products to wear. But honestly, even though these shades look fun, I really, like, these are really bold colors. I already have a red lip stain from Aether. I already have some peachy ones. This one looks very bright. I don't really like pink. And these three berry ones, I had the shade Berry Banger on here. I just don't really wear berry lip products very much at all, especially not this time of year. Maybe in the fall and winter I would, but yeah, I'm just not really interested in this anymore. As much as I would love to try the formula, I just don't think I need any of these shades. And I don't need any li new lip products. Another Patrick Ta lipstick here, goodbye. Ah, uh, the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm for Hydration and Shine. I had the color Vanilla. I still would love to try this, but like I said, I already have plenty of lip balm to get through. And I would definitely consider this in the future if I ever, like, run out of lip balm. <laughs> I don't know if that'll ever happen, but if I do, I would consider this, but I, yeah. For now, I'm going to take it off my wish list. Here we have the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush in Hope. I already have this one. Love it, but I don't need to keep it on my wish list because I already have it. I, I don't know. I'm not really feeling as interested in this product anymore. Honestly, I feel like the fact that this only comes in two shades makes me not want to get it. I think I'm going to take this off my loves list because I really try to only promote bronzers that have at least a decent shade range, and this only comes in two shades, I'm just realizing. Like, the shade fair slash medium looks like it would work well for me, but it's just not an inclusive shade range. So, you know what? For that reason, I'm gonna just take it off right now. Goodbye. Then we have the Fenty Body Sauce Luminizing Tint. So this is like a body bronzer. Um, I honestly, I don't know why this, <laughs> I don't know why this was ever on my loves list. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, also the shade I had on here is not even the shade that I would want. I'm gonna take that off. I, I don't use body bronzer. Yeah, no. Okay. Another lip product here from Summer Fridays. This is the shade Pink Sugar. I'm gonna take that off as well. Um, I guess this is the mini size of the, um, liquid blush from Rare Beauty, which I already have, so I'll take that off. Another Fenty lip gloss. This is in the shade Sweet Mouth. I, I went ahead and left the Fenty Glow shade on my list. I will go ahead and take this one off because I feel like if I were to get any shade, it would be Fenty Glow. So we'll take that off. Okay, let's see. This I have heard such good things about, the Tower 28 SOS Daily Skin Barrier Moisturizer. This sounds so nice. <sighs> Yeah, I'm going to leave this on. It sounds perfect for me. It's an intentionally basic daily moisturizer designed for sensitive skin, formulated with hyaluronic acid and ceramides. Yeah. I actually, yeah. I don't know whether I would rather get this one or that pharmacy niacinamide mask. But yeah, I'm going to leave this on here. Last time I was in a Sephora store with Tosh from Too Much Tosh in Vegas, we swatched a bunch of Danessa Myricks products and it made me want to try more from this brand. So I added this shade to my wish list. This is their color fix in the shade Jewels. It's a mint green with coral pink duochrome. Looks beautiful. Um, I am going to leave this on here. This is another thing that's at the top of my wish list, I would say. I also added a few shades here of the Say Do Blush. This is their blendable liquid blush. I added this after watching Kelly Gooch's most recent like Sephora sale recommendations video. She, I think the shades she recommended was the one that sold out, which is peachy. Honestly, of all the shades, that one looks like one of my favorites. Um, 
yeah, if I were to get any shade of this, probably Peachy would be the one I would want. But I also have on my loves list Rosy, Poppy, and Cutie. They all look beautiful. But from what I've heard, it sounds like this is a really nice, like, easy to work with liquid blush. And, you know, it doesn't take much to sell me on a liquid blush. So I'm definitely interested. I did actually just purchase the e.l.f. liquid blush. Now that I'm looking at this Say one, I'm almost wondering if the e.l.f. liquid blush was meant to dupe this. Because the packaging of the e.l.f. one looks even more like this. And the e.l.f. doe foot applicator also looks more like this one. Um, anyway, maybe I will pick it up to test for science. But... Yeah, I think if I were to get a shade, if, if Peachy doesn't come back, I would probably get the shade Rosy. That looks really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna keep that one on. Yeah, I'll go ahead and keep all three of these on and we will see, we will just see what happens. <laughs> um, I also have on here another couple things that Kelly recommended, the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder. Huda Beauty is another brand that I would really like to try something from. I've never tried anything from Huda Beauty, and I really love loose setting powders. This is the shade that Kelly recommended, the shade Peach Pie. I know pink powder has been a big trend recently. Apparently peach powder is also trending, but this is for medium to tan with warm undertones, but I think Kelly and I are actually pretty close in skin tone. I think she's like a little bit deeper than me, but if it works for her, I don't know. I'm kind of worried this would be a little too dark on my under eyes specifically, so... Um, yeah, if any of you have tried this shade, let me know if you think that this would work for me. I, I like that this comes in a mini size because I, I just, like I said, I prefer minis if I can get them. So Peach Pie is one shade I have on my list, and then I also have Cherry Blossom. This is a pink one. This looks very pink. This says it's for fair to medium with true pink undertones. So those are the two that I've kind of got my eye on. Okay, this is the concealer that I am really interested in trying. This is the Natasha Denona High Glam Brightening and Hydrating Concealer. Everyone loves this concealer. I don't think I've heard anyone give a negative review of this concealer, and I am just so curious to try it. So I need to figure out exactly which shade I would get, but I'm thinking the shade N3 sounds and looks about right. Again, I'm going to check the foundation website. It's this website where you can put in some products that you know are a good match for you, and then it'll give you the correct shade of whatever you're interested in buying. So it's not always 100% accurate, I will say, but most of the time, I would say like 90% of the time, it is accurate. So anyway, the High Glam, this is another thing that like if I buy anything in this sale, it's probably going to be this concealer. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I've just got to know. I have got to know what all the hype is about. This is the Patrick Ta blush, like I said, that I think I would be most interested in. Honestly, though, I still think, well, this shade is already um, sold out. So if I were to get something from Patrick Ta, I think it would actually still be that bronzer duo because I think I want that even more than I want this. But if this comes back in stock, I definitely would consider it. We have here the Ilia Skin Rewind Blurring Foundation and Concealer Complexion Stick. You guys know I love the Ilia Skin Tint. It's one of my favorite complexion products ever. So I I don't know. I've never, I don't know if I've ever tried a foundation stick. Like in all my years of makeup, I don't know if I've ever tried a foundation stick. I think I've always just been afraid that they're going to look cakey because I feel like that's kind of the, that's how they, they have been in the past. But I don't know. Knowing how much I love the Ilia Skin Tint, I definitely have would have high hopes for this. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep this on my loves list, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm definitely not as interested in this as I am the Fenty, um, Ease Drop product. All right, we're getting towards the top here. We have the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes Eyeshadow Palette. Why do I want this? Makeup by Mario is another brand that I would like to try, because I know they're, like, one of the most popular brands right now. <sighs> And I, I kind of would like a, an all matte palette at some point. I don't know. Why do I want this? <sighs> like, is it just because it's new and, and it's been really hyped up recently? Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to leave this on my list, but I don't know if I'm going to buy that. I've been hearing about this brand a lot recently. This is 
this is it CLA? CLA? It's this brand that makes a lot of makeup products that contain SPF. So this is a liquid blush with SPF 50 in the in the formula, which I think is super cool. I feel like you can never have too much SPF. Um, and any added SPF is always a bonus, especially on like the high points of your cheeks, you know, like it makes sense to have extra coverage there. So yeah, I think I would get this dusty rose shade. This looks like my kind of blush color. Although Elodie looks really pretty too, and so does Kir Kirsty. I'm gonna add Kirsty also. Um, yeah, it's between Kirsty and Bahati. Here we have the LYS Higher Standard Blush Stick. Um, you know, I have this on here because I like a lot of other LYS products, but I actually think I'm gonna take this off because honestly, when it comes to cream blush, I really prefer if it's either in a compact or like some kind of pot or just a straight up liquid. Like I'm kind of over stick cheek products. I'm still like, I'll still try them, but it's not my preferred format. And I actually have the LYS bronzer stick and I love the, that product itself, but the stick actually came loose from the packaging. So it's kind of, it like doesn't twist down anymore, which is annoying. So yeah, I'm gonna take this off. I just feel like of all the blushes on here, this one I'm not as interested in for some reason. So I'm just gonna take that off. I feel like none of the shades are really calling to me. I mean, Curvy looks like the one I'd be most interested in, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just not really feeling that excited about this blush. So I'm gonna take that off my list. Another Glossier Cloud Paint. This is their new bronzer. I This shade Sail looks perfect. That makes me think of the song. So, yeah, I'm really tempted by this, actually. I, like, this shade looks perfect, and I think I would actually prefer to try this over the Cloud Paint blush, just because, A, it's newer to the market, so people will probably be more interested to hear my review of this versus the blush. Also, I don't know, I just, I feel like I have a lot of blush. I don't have as much bronzer as I have blush, so I'm more open to adding bronzers to my collection versus blushes. Okay, this is definitely staying on the list. Okay, also, these are new from Rare Beauty. They're Soft Pinch Luminous Powder Blushes. I'm definitely interested in this, for sure. I think if I were to get a shade of this, I probably wouldn't get Hope, because I think this is sort of, like, the same color as the Hope Liquid Blush, and I already have that shade in Liquid, and I'd rather get a shade that I don't have. Obviously, this is different because it's glowy, um, but... I think I'd rather get something different, so I'll take this one off. The other two shades I have here are Cheer and Joy. Honestly, looking at Cheer again, it says it's a light warm pink. It looks pretty cool to me in the photo, but this is like Selena's custom shade. Um, This looks similar to the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush in Shimmery Rose that I already have, so I think I'll take this off. But yeah, I think Joy would be the shade that I would want to get. Okay, nearing the end here, this is the Urban Decay Face Bond Self-Setting Waterproof Foundation. This has not launched yet. I think I'm supposed to be receiving this in PR, but I don't know where it is. Like, I thought it was supposed to get here by now. So I don't know if it just got lost in the mail, but um, I'm interested in this. I really liked the Urban Decay Hydromaniac foundation. I've liked a lot of Urban Decay complexion products in the past. Hydromaniac, I also used to love the um, Naked Skin foundation. It was in like the cylindrical bottle. It was a very liquidy foundation. Almost, I'm almost thinking this might be similar to that Naked Skin foundation, which they discontinued a long time ago. That's the thing about Urban Decay that bugs me is they discontinue complexion products very frequently. But I don't know, this sounds nice. This sounds like something I would enjoy. I like the idea of a self-setting foundation too, because especially in the summertime, like it sounds nice to just have like a one-step complexion product and then not have to go over it with powder. Medium coverage, matte finish. I'm into matte finishes recently. So I'm going to leave this on my loves list in case I don't get it in PR. I, I'm definitely interested in buying this. Also, I like this they're kind of throwing it back with this packaging too. This reminds me of a lot of the old Urban Decay like primer potion packaging that had this sort of old school vibe. 
I don't know. I'm liking, I'm liking the direction they're headed here. So that'll stay here on the list. Another thing from Huda Beauty, this is their Glowish Soft Radiance Vegan Bronzing Powder. Who did I hear recently that said Huda Beauty is discontinuing their Glowish line? Who was that? I don't remember. I mean, this is not, um, not marked down or anything. So maybe, I don't know, maybe that's not true, but the Glowish Soft Radiance Bronzing Powder, I have the shade Light on my wish list. This just looks beautiful. I know this is not a new product at all, and if it's being discontinued, I probably wouldn't want to get it just because, you know, then it's not going to be relevant to review on my channel, but I don't really have any glowy powder bronzers right now, so I'm, I'm interested in this one. Then we have the Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Blush. This is a very orangey peach color. I just, honestly, any cream blush I added to my wish list because I love cream blush. But, um, I don't know if I would like this shade. It almost looks maybe a little bit too orange. Let's see. Um, actually, no, in the swatch it doesn't look that orangey. <sighs> yeah, okay, I'm gonna leave this on. I'm gonna leave it on. Also have the Fenty Cream Bronzer. This, I chose the shade Amber, which is like a contour shade. I I love their powder bronzer so much that I'm just also tempted by their cream bronzer because I feel like I would probably also love this. Um, but I think if I were to get a bronzer, I would probably go for that Patrick Ta Duo because, for one, it's a duo, and it's only $5 more than this single bronzer. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to leave this on my wish list. I probably wouldn't get it this time around, but... I'm definitely interested. And I think these are just some different shades of things that I added on during this video, so um, we don't need to go through any of these because these I just added, but oh, I will take off the full size of Rosie Outlook of the Lawless Forget the Filler because I think I would prefer to get the mini since they have a mini available of that. So I'm going to take that off, but Glazed Rosie Outlook, Dusk in the Glossier Cloud Paint, um, I also added this other shade of the Say Dew Blush, which is out of stock, but if it ever comes back, I'm interested. And this other shade of the CLA Blush. I hope I'm saying that correctly. So that is everything. We definitely narrowed it down. I'm happy to have removed quite a few products from here. Let me see. Oh, I don't know if I actually... Did I skip this one? I don't think I talked about this one. The Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. Did I? I don't remember. Um, I'm going to add the brown one to my list because they did recently come out with a brown version. And I am going to leave this on my loves list. I'm not going to buy it now because I have too many other uh, mascaras to use up. But this is one of those mascaras I feel like everyone loves and I'm very curious to try it. So it's on my loves list, but it's not like an urgent, urgent thing that I want. Let me just go back through and see if there's anything else I want to take off. Um, yeah, I think all of this can stay. Okay, that was so much fun. I feel a lot more organized and prepared for the sale now. Let me know any feedback you have on these products. Do you think I would hate any of them? Do you think I would love them? Let me know your thoughts down below, but I hope you guys enjoyed getting to take a little peek at my Sephora wish list. Let me know what's on your wish list if you are planning on shopping the sale this time around, or if you're planning on skipping, let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you had fun. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. I also have a Patreon and a channel membership where I upload an exclusive vlog and makeup video every month. So I would love to have you over there as well. Otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.